Ladies and gentlemen, it is officially live. It is now time for Transformation Greatness, along with the Small Business Network podcast, episode 139. And this is going to be for the Domestic Violence Awareness Month series as it continues to kick off. I can tell you this has been a pleasure. This has been an honor and a privilege just to be interviewing those that's in this space. And that's really passionate and courageous as well for even sharing their story. I see you, Tibia. So ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go ahead and get this party started. And do me a favor, as you will, as I invite my guest on, if you're catching us on, on the live, then do me a favor, put in hashtag live and let us know exactly where you're tuning in from. And then, but of course, if you're catching us on a replay because of the fact that, you know, you're busy, you're committing to our commitments, whatever the case, then put in hashtag replay. I'm your host, I'm Sean White, founder and creator of Transformation Greatness, which by the way, we're all about motivating, encouraging, and inspiring the masses. And my brand is triple fold because I am a speaker. In addition to being a coach, as well as a hypnotherapist practitioner, but also in addition as well, I have the responsibility, I'm sorry, or title of being a radio and TV personality with the Small Business Network, along with my business partners, Dr. James McConnell, Chrissy Redding, Roosevelt Russell, Nicole Player, and many others. And of course, I wear many different hats. So beautiful thing. That's just a little bit about me. But tonight, it's about our very special guest here. Pratibia, um, send me an invite because whatever reason, I don't know why it's not allowed for me to send you an invite. But tonight, m- my guest is someone that in this space, and I mentioned this when we did the test run, that is well respected as far as in the social media streets. She has accomplished a lot. I had an opportunity to have a conversation with her, and I really just love her spirit. I love her. And, and you, you know what? For She's a, a prime example of it doesn't matter on how you start. It's all about on where you're going, what you're doing, and also how will you finish. Where you going? Tonight, you're going to have an opportunity. We got a lot of echo there. You may have to echo it from your phone. Okay. Hi, can you hear me? I guess I can. Can you hear me about the echo? Yeah, so we're going to do this just from my phone. So we're going to rock and roll. Okay. (laughs) Just how it is. Hi, guys. And did I cut you off? Excellent, excellent. So with no further ado, as I see, she's so excited. She's ready to get <laughs> rock and rolling. So forget the pleasantries. Let's just jump right into it. That's what I'm talking about here. Aww. So we have here our very special guest, and I want to make sure that I'm um, pronouncing her name correctly. Is it Protivia Day? No, it's okay, because we're not attached to our names over here. So it's okay. Pratiba. It's Pratiba Day. Yeah. Pratiba Day. Pratiba, awesome. yeah. You can call me Tiba. It's fine. Okay, Tiba, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Look at she let me off the hook. I tell you, because I probably would have chopped the name up twenty times tonight, Aww. and I'm pretty sure Aww. she would probably got you know pretty upset. But anywho, um, welcome, welcome here to Transformation Greatness, along with the Small Business Network podcast. Uh, we're definitely excited to have you on board here and to be a guest, and you know, um, being be a part of the, the domestic violence awareness um month series so i thank mm. you for that first and foremost let's jump into this bad boy shall we because just like i was mentioning to the listener audience you have accomplished so much um i had a chance to take a look at your profile we had a chance to speak but for those that may not know you right yeah. can you tell them a little bit just a little bit more okay. about you and then we can go ahead and get started so well, hi everyone. Great evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I'm here in New Jersey. And so a little bit about me. I started the mental health journey really four years ago in 2020 after I experienced a lot of hardship and a lot of loss. And I felt alone in the world and I felt alone with the burden that I had to carry only at the age of 27 and just turning 27. And there was no community for me. I always felt so alone and who to share this with. So I decided to create a community and that's how Chai Together Community, which is my online group, 
uh, which turned into a brand and video podcast. Um, and then it just grew from there. And I started speaking about mental health, suicide prevention, and worked in the field of mental health as a counselor. So that's a bit about me, <laughs> a little bit, yeah. Cool. So let's so let's go ahead now and dive in a little bit deeper because like man, you're doing so much. But I guess like my question is is like because you mentioned that you had a history, obviously, of mm -hmm. like on um, domestic violence and and, and yeah. abuse and you know, I guess my question is because I, I mean it's totally <laughs> up, uh, up to you how you wanna answer this. I don't know if you wanna touch your your story of how that all started or <laughs> maybe you can go to like how like what did you do to transition out of that because i know it takes a lot of courage right and obviously we all know there's still a ton of people in the world that's suffering from domestic violence and they just not comfortable they're scared you know they have all different types of emotions so maybe you can share us a little bit of your backstory <laughs> there's like so much to unpack here but let's start with the beginning like of the definition of domestic violence like okay. so let me ask you like what do you view as domestic violence like how how do the majority of people actually see it as like what do you think of when you hear domestic violence yeah i guess that's a great question because i remember growing up you know being being in front of the projects you know brooklyn brooklyn new york you know it was all all types of violence from gun violence to drugs to you would hear like arguments from like your neighbors it'd be like a lot of physical abuse a lot of different things of that nature so for that for me it was like a way of life right it was pretty normal right especially growing up in the 80s during the crack era i mean this, the murder rate was just like at an all-time high you know in new york so domestic violence it was like really a way of life it went hand in hand it was pretty normal for us growing up in the hood right we we, we didn't know that we didn't know, know that you know domestic violence was wrong right because of fact it happened every single day and either if it wasn't happening in our households and more times than not the friends that we hung out with or with our family members you know it was happening so again for us it was just a way of life it was normal not until obviously as i got older i started realizing like obviously you know that that's not living obviously that's not, not living but when you're in that cycle when you grow up especially like in, in the slums and uh section eight right and poverty that's a way of life um, uh, unfortunately and it's normal unfortunately I like how you put that way of life because for a lot of people, they don't know the difference because that's their normal, quote unquote. And that's actually something that uh, I would teach when I used to facilitate my group classes. So, um, yeah, the reason why I asked that is because most people think it's just physical. But yeah. actually, it's a majority, it's 96% um, women that are affected by males and only less than 4% that are registered, you know, uh, all over the United States that are even. Um, I'm sorry, 4% of men, I hope I didn't say this incorrectly, that are uh, domestically abused by women that are registered, you know, through the court and things. So it's such a low percentage. So um, I'm just going to start here with domestic violence because a lot of times, because I worked with a group of men actually coming from prison, uh, coming from DCPMP, either they need to get their kids back or they have to go through my program and I have to, um, you know, do the report writing and have them certified that they're good to go and know how to have a healthy relationship. So it's really great that you mention about the household because that's really the root of everything. That's where it begins. And let's get real a lot of the time people aren't ready to be parents when they become parents there's still inner child healing that needs to be done and majority of people don't need to be parents i feel mm -hmm. and domestic violence in itself would be uprooted if people were to heal first before they step into um you know creating life i feel so my story with domestic violence, I would say instead of getting into all the details necessarily, right, like I can share parts, but right. it all starts in the family. So for me as well, and being South Asian, a lot of South Asian women usually don't have a voice, right, or inferior, especially in Middle East and India, right, which is where I come from. I migrated to this country in 1999, and I was a shy person, and I wasn't allowed to have a voice. So it's really interesting that what's really your calling and what's your soul journey is not someone that 
like there's no one that can actually stop it and i'm actually learning a lot about the soul now and the spirit and doing a lot of this inner work because you can forget all the noise and all the details of well this happened to me this happened to me this happened to me and really look at the core of well what am i rooted here to do like what is my soul's purpose like why am i here and i truly feel all the different domestic violence from emotional, verbal, mental, financial abuse, um, environmental, and physical. All these things I experienced from the age of four or five up until uh, 27. So mm. up until that point. And the story from here on you heard before that I shared with you is that my past trauma, my childhood trauma, and my generational trauma people, it's a, such a cliche word because people quote this word a lot, a lot, like generational trauma. You see all these social media posts and quotes and everything. But a lot of people look at social media as education, but that's not education. And that's why I'm saying now I'm really digging deeper and reading books and talking to shaman. Like I have a shaman um, that I go to and really looking at the deeper work of um, my roots rather than just learning from social media or people's opinions. So the reason I say all this is because I just feel that, I don't know, I just, I'm just going to digress here, but I just feel that in this country, because I, I used to live in Thailand, and that's where I'm going to start off after I state this, that I told okay. you, but in this country, after working in the mental health field and now leaving the mental health field, like leaving the system, because they didn't want me to heal people, right? They just wanted me to put a Band-Aid on and they want me to keep feeding individuals to the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. And when I offer holistic ways to heal, they actually don't want me to speak up about that as much. So I decided to leave because I'm very limited to actually healing people, right? People go into mental health because they want to heal people. Mental health is part of domestic violence. It's all intertwined and we're all intertwined as beings. So. You know, when you offer help, there is actually no help available in the mental health system, and even psychiatrists don't even know why we have the diagnosis we do. Uh, but, 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 and, and, and I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but can you come uh, a little bit more in, into the camera? Is this it? Yeah, perfect, oh, right there. Why and was also, I half? Oh, okay, that's why. Yeah, okay. and also too, like your volume went down as well. I noticed, and I'm hearing oh, the echoing too. Is it good now? Let me see here. Is it good now? Can you hear my echo? No. Okay, that's perfect. There you go. Excellent. It's, okay. It's because my thumb was actually covering the speaker. Because <laughs> uh, okay. I'm on the phone. So I apologize um, to everybody who's. There listening. you go. The volume is. It went back to normal a thousand times better. But go ahead, continue. <laughs> continue. Um, I don't even know where I exactly was, but it's fine. But yeah, really. So when I was 27, I'll just go back to that because I digressed. When I was 27, um, all my past trauma, I feel like strengthened me, right? Made me a really resilient person to come to that point of where I was able to overcome this and create a brand of my own, a community of my own and go from there. And like, how did I even become a stronger woman that was able to get out of that? And I repeatedly kept stepping into the same, you know, S I'm going to say, not curse, but right. it's like, what, what? And it's like each time, you know, for years, like I suffer from clinical depression and suicide ideation, but I always knew that I wanted to get out of it. Like I would pray to God, like, how do I get out of this? I want to get out of this trauma that I just had hope. Literally, uh, when I was 20 years young and I'm 30 now, and I used to talk to God and I used to say, someone out there needs me. And I would say these positive affirmations, um, I have tattooed, keep your faith. So whenever I felt suicidal, I would read that on my body in the Proverbs. I have tattooed on my body from the Bible, uh, Tree of Life. Um, so Proverbs 1130. So it's really interesting that something in my soul knew that this isn't it for me. Right. and one day i finally found my way home like to myself and through a blessing in disguise that i shared with you so when i was 27 i found myself uh being involved in a domestic violence relationship which i viewed as love which was really love bombing and this is a period of time i've never had therapy i had never um been on any medications i um really didn't have any guidance or support in my family such as you know a father 
um, that would guide me towards that, a mother who would guide me towards proper people in life. So not having that, I was just kind of falling, you know, all over the place. And that's how a lot of women uh, become distressed in life and lead towards, you know, a path that isn't feminine to their divine energy. So yeah, I found my myself involved in that relationship and uh it was really scary because um it was at this time i found myself to become pregnant uh through the situation and i was actually expecting in my second trimester when i um i quote it ran for my life because i literally did uh i escaped um you know unknowingly i had to i left the country <laughs> so i fled the country mm -hmm. to save my life and save my child and hope that and having faith literally just holding on to hope and faith and of right. course having courage and it's interesting because a chai together which is my brand the community i created the acronym chai stands for courage hope and inspiration and i truly embody that and a lot of people may make brands just you know uh to become popular for the heck of it for commercialization but my right. brand was rooted from uh the loss of my children uh because it was twins so i found my mm. way back uh, mm. through two friends who helped me um, get back on my feet. And uh, it was the scariest time, yet I kind of felt uh, numb to it. I kind of felt hysterical, almost like I was laughing as if like it, life felt like a joke that I found myself four months pregnant uh, on the streets, you know? Um, and I was a teacher prior, you know, and I was teaching in Thailand and that, I, you know, it was mind boggling to me. So moving forward, I decided to have an abortion in my second trimester. And I was shamed, you know, um, I was shamed, I was told I should be embarrassed and all these things. And that uh, my children were actually black. Uh, they were Cameroonian. And I was told that me being South Asian, that's not welcome in our community. So they're racism oh, wow. on top of that. So oh, wow. facing all these I things, did. you know, and facing yeah so facing uh facing a lot of hardship you know um just from that and even uh, some physical abuse even after that like the things that i had to experience and the homelessness uh prior to uh being pregnant during and after you know living out of a suitcase bouncing from house to house it was it was a feeling that i don't feel any any human being needs to feel when you feel alone in the world so i agree that I being agree. said I can idea um, with that. I can totally agree. Yeah. And the smile you see and how I look and all, like this all wasn't there. Right. And it, I had that Britney moment, you would say, and I did shave my head off. But it was more so for because I'm spiritual, it was more so for healing. And Buddhist monks actually shave their heads for release, like a new rebirth. Mm. And I lived in Thailand and I believe in Buddhism and my background's in Hinduism, but I'm open to all uh, just spirituality. So I found myself in that situation and and I'm just really, really grateful how God blessed my life throughout and I received um, um, my pay and you know through uh, unemployment when I came back. So I suddenly had a lot of money uh, coming back into the States and it's like God really supported me once I stepped into my power of making the best decision for myself. But really how Chai Together came about um, is because my mom and I would have chai together, which is Indian masala chai, uh, not the Starbucks chai latte. That's not what I'm talking about. Okay. But, but point being, I had never been live. I had never made a video. I didn't really know many people. And it started from scratch. I painted my logo uh, with dollar store paint that I had and printer paper. And it came to me in a dream. And at this time I had aborted my kids and they came to me, it came to me in a dream and I always wanted to bring it to fruition. So I brought it to life. I brought my idea to life and I decided in that moment when I, when I had released them, then a loss, I would say that I was going to be successful in life and I wasn't going to let their death go in vain. It made me really, really strong. And it does something to a woman that I feel only a woman would know um, mm -hmm. in her design that when a woman goes through uh, such hardship when it comes to a physical loss uh, regarding her body. I want to I want to say something on that. Sure. And by the way, yeah, that was that was a, a, absolutely powerful, right? For for all those, um, before I get to my points, yeah. I just wanted to say hello to everyone. Um, Brother Dave, thank, thank you, man. I definitely appreciate it. And Ro Roosevelt Russell is in the house. Welcome, welcome. He's actually a part of the Small Business Network. He's actually, you know, one of my partners and CEOs. Um, two points I wanted to make. I mean, I, as I was listening, yeah. um, to you. 
my first point is this is like you made a decision be, be, because you, you could have easily said you know what everything in which i went through you know through the abortion through the you know the abuse you know being mm-hmm. homeless mm-hmm. coming back to the states you know you you could just say you know what i'm just going to start over and i'm just going to keep this to myself but yet when you receive this digital download you know from god and you just knew somehow some way that you would be successful that in itself is huge because a lot of people and obviously you know work working <laughs> in the field and you know um you know seeing clients you know how it's not easy i don't know anybody really in their right state of mind that's going to be like oh okay well yeah you know this happened to me for 15 years and yeah i'm going to go ahead and share it no it's a lot of shame and guilt and hurt and all those strong emotions in between plus the fear of criticism and everything else so i gotta give you major major um props for that that's the first one the second one is this too that for you to say okay you know what I know I went through it and I know I'm supposed to share, <laughs> but yet making that decision for an opportunity to come about and you say yes to share your story and your expertise. And for that in itself it has to be commended because again, there's a lot of individuals, especially in the speaking world, right? I mean, it's a lot of people that's experts. They can teach you everything from funnels to sales strategies to marketing to branding, everything else in between the sun. And they are brilliant in their lane. Mm-hmm. But to me, this is just for me, mm-hmm. I don't find too many people that are truly authentic. And oh. I'm hearing from you, and basically, you know, when when I did my research on you, I see that you're very <laughs> aud- aud- authentic. So I guess my question for you, and maybe put a list in the audience, because I see no one has any questions. Where did that, um, I guess, level of being truly aud- 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 authentic came from? <laughs> where, where I only you? laugh. You know, I always laugh, but I literally was born this way. I've been this way my whole life. I used to go up to homeless people since I was a child and ask them their name and ask for a hug. And I feel like my spirit, I used to be called a, um, what is a moon child or flower child. And I've always been a free spirit. This has always been in my nature. And I support anyone and everyone before people even knew me on social media, before I even had Facebook and this community. I've been like this my whole life. But you know, when they say that, you can be trying something like a strategy to get, you know, to get noticed and all it doesn't work. And that's because you need to change your strategy. The only difference is I got online and I shared what I went through before I didn't have a voice that I have the confidence or the courage. But okay. when you lose kids, you don't fear anything. If so, it, it's kind of like someone wants to hurt me, hurt, like try me. Like it's kind of like, I'm going to F you up. Like mm-hmm. you get so angry at life that there's nothing worse that can happen to you except to lose kids. I mean, something to that extent, yes, you lose parents and things, but that's just another level. And I feel like that's still a loss. Um, I mean, it is a loss, but when people I used to hear my story, they would think, oh, how old were they? It's like, well, it does. that's a uh, presumption. Like, it doesn't mean that they were born yet. Right. You know, people experience all different kinds of loss. It just happens. Mine wasn't ideal. It's not something I wanted. It's what the life circumstance I had. And me being a teacher, you know, it's not ideal that I wanted to have an abortion. Right. It was my first pregnancy in right. life. Right. And it was I was actually engaged as well to this individual. So my world was just crashing down. And so, but I wanted to go back to regarding Chai uh, to mention that in the midst of all of this, I also have a mother who has schizophrenia and that's why I started the community. So while I was dealing with my own stuff, I was taking care of a mom who has schizophrenia. Wow. And I also graduated top of my class in college after my abortion and my university featured my community as a part of the school. Wow. So, wow. so I really, when I say I was restless, I mean... I did everything I could uh, to do as much as I could um, in the world because I was just really using my anger to propel myself forward. Right, right, yeah. right. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> so, yeah, you did. You did mention you had an opportunity as far as to be on like speaking platforms yeah. and be able to share. Can you can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. 
So yes, so I actually, my first video that I ever made on my broken iPhone at the time, coming back from Thailand and having experienced that with my bald head and everything, when I barely had anything except for maybe like six pieces of clothes, I sat in the grass with that same broken phone screen iPhone and I made a three minute video about uh, what I went through was a challenge. So because of the money I now had through unemployment and COVID happening, I used my funds instead of buying a car, instead of buying clothes or anything, I put everything into self-development, wow. everything, wow. everything, all $15,000, $16,000 and more actually. Um, so I joined with Les Brown and mm. then he got to know my story. And I was one of the top uh, 20 speakers when he launched his program. Wow. Uh, yeah. Oh. And what was that experience like? Like just <laughs> working with Les Brown because he's with like, Les. yeah, Les is the character, and I actually worked with him for up to a year, like ten months, eight months to ten months, um, on calls, and spoke to him a few times. And he came here to New York. I went to go see him there, and really, I I'm great with people, and naturally, I care about people. So networking for me isn't. I don't have an agenda. You know, when I speak to people, I naturally always want to know people's stories and talk to people. So, so that three minute video came about and, um, it was interesting because it didn't even get reviewed and I got selected as in, I was just so powerful and my power at that time. And it's still today. Um, I just claimed it and I already knew I didn't have to, and I was actually featured on his website too. Wow. <laughs> so wow. it's wow. pretty crazy and it's pretty crazy. Uh, so my network just blew up from, uh, that point. And uh, yeah, he really liked my speech. It was a virtual summit at the time of COVID. Then I went to Atlanta um, and Les was still virtual, but we all went to Atlanta to speak on stage. It's my first time um, for a motivational speaking. And I did my speech and I blew that S out of the water. <laughs> Congratulations. I was a, so I'm, I'm called, um, what do you call it? Um, what would you say? Firecracker? Firehouse, okay. whatever people say, like, I really uh, get loud, like, as in, I have something to say, right. and people need to listen. Right. So that's my personality. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool. So with that being said, wow, and I mean, you know what, congratulations. <laughs> and, you know, I know Le Les Brown, and I think I said this too on one of my many live streams. I remember when Transformation Greatness was, was actually birthed. Uh -huh. And by the, and by the way, for a lot, some a lot of people know, but then again, a lot of people don't know. Mm -hmm. But my brand was basically birthed out of my lowest point in my life. I'm talking about financially, spiritually, emotionally. You know, I was in a shelter that was designed from an old prison. So you can just imagine the type of characters that was actually in the shelter. I was around murderers, rapists, you know, you name it, pretty much was there, right? And mm -hmm. we didn't have beds. We had like those hard metal beds. And every night it would either be like super cold or super hot. It was just nightmarish. But what I, I learned from that is really that at my lowest point where I, you know what, it was like, I was at the crossroads mm -hmm. and it was like, I could have just gave up mm -hmm. and just cursed <laughs> God and just gave up. And who knows where I'd be at right now. Right. Decided to just figure it out, do my own thing. But what I did is that I leaned on God and really depended and trusted on God. And I tell you what, that's how transformation greatness was actually birthed. And mm -hmm. Maybe one day I'll go back and I'll explain the origin of transformation greatness, just in case if those that's new they really don't know my story. Mm -hmm. But the reason why I bring that up is because more times than not, and again, this is just my opinion, uh -huh. until a person <laughs> really went through something, mm -hmm. really went through some storms, it's mm -hmm. very difficult for you to really really try to communicate with your audience when you're trying to explain to them in terms of encouragement, in terms of inspiration, in terms of motivation, right? It's very difficult if you haven't been through a storm like that yourself and you have proof or hard evidence mm -hmm. to support that. I know as far as in the scriptures, it's talk about, well, actually like in the churches and whatnot, it talks mm -hmm. about having a testimony mm -hmm. and that's an absolute truth. So for the fact that you are, 
you know, doing on what you're currently doing, right, as of right now, is truly a testimony and it's truly an inspiration in itself. So let me ask you this, because you are a teacher, right? So because obviously we, you know, we discussed the numbers and the numbers is very, very high, right? For those that's reported, but there's a lot of cases that's not being reported. If there is someone that's going through a domestic violence situation or knows someone, mm -hmm. right, or that's probably in a toxic environment where it's like that, mm -hmm. what can a person do? What resources that they would have in which, you know, they can get that support? Because obviously we both know it's not easy. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I see when we say domestic violence, sometimes people think it's only romantic, but it's not, right. you know, okay. it can be family, it can be other things. So my first thing will be to contact the domestic violence hotline and you can do that different ways. Right. And I say that because they are trained, you know, to guide you for your specific situation. Right. Okay. And so now I'm also working with women, you know, in domestic violence to help them heal their life. So if you're a woman and you want to talk to me, you can email me. And can I just share my email if they need it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll and I'll write it in the comments. So it's my first Absolutely. name, Pratiba, P-R-A-T-I-B-H-A, -A, last name D-E-Y-01 at gmail.com. So, and you can find this on my website too, pratibaday.com. But so I'm working, I'm going to be working with women only after this October. And I used to work with men when I used to counsel them in domestic violence. And the reason why I'm choosing women is because I've learned that I asked God and God gave me a sign and he told me to focus on the women because a lot of women come to me regarding that. Um, but you asked, what can people do? I feel like each scenario is different. So it depends what someone's means are like, do you have any finances to where you can leave the situation? my situation i was lucky to where i have uh you know friends that were able to help me you know and things like that so it all depends uh what you have and you have to start with what you have but anything is possible but you just have to physically leave the environment mm -hmm. that's the number one thing a lot of the time it's just mental even now i do have friends now too who are in such situations whether it's even their work environment or anything and they don't leave because of the fear because you don't know what you don't know when you're inside the picture frame les brown says this a lot Correct. when you're inside the picture frame you don't see yourself and that's what a lot of mental health and trauma and domestic violence really is you're so normalized to pain and suffering mm -hmm. <laughs> like it's it, you're just normalized to pain and suffering and Correct. that you don't see a different life for yourself that you possibly even forgot to dream or envision what a healthy lifestyle or healthy relationship and healthy love even looks like. And that's right. what you need to return to because I think we all know you weren't born here just so you can be abused, you know, physically, verbally, mentally, and be told that you're going to be nothing in life and that right. you're stupid and that um, you can go die, you know? And it's interesting because I was actually told these things. Mm. And so look, at, I actually was told, uh, to go kill myself uh, last week by somebody online. They told me to go kill myself. It's very interesting because it says a lot about the individual than about me. Uh, because, you know, if I wanted to kill myself, God would have took me out many years ago and not got me here today. Agreed. So if I killed myself, how many people will be living today? We all help one another like a helping hand. So maybe someone else wouldn't exist today if I wasn't here. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so what? So what? So what's next? What? What can people e e expect more from you? Because you did mention as far as you're gonna be uh -huh. working with w women more, but yeah. what's next on your menu? Like, are you gonna be doing TV, radio? Are you gonna <laughs> be speaking around the world? Like, what's uh, going on? Uh, I love that you say that because yeah, TV is my goal, and I'm not talking Roku TV or anything. So. Fun stuff. I want to tell you two things. When I was 19, I had lunch with Stedman Graham, which is Oprah's partner. Mm -hmm. He lives here in Jersey and I'm in Jersey. And when I was in school, I took a ticket to go see him for a luncheon. And that was the most inspirational day of my life, being 19, meeting Stedman. And he always said that I was at the table next to him. He said, don't refer to him as Oprah's boyfriend, that he has his own identity. And that right. always stayed with me forever. But I'm sharing. Sharing this because I always wanted to um, 
be like Oprah, like, like do something like open an orphanage or something. And it seems like my life is coming together in that way with my story, my background, but then all the fruitful things come about after. So I feel like I'm 30 and I still have ways to go and whatever God wants me to accomplish as long, like as far as I'm needed to go, my soul needs to go. And then when it's time to leave this earth, I leave this earth, like the physical body. So I'm just here to keep doing this work and helping people. And I help people every day and not even for monetary gain, just naturally, it's a gift of mine. And my gift has always been to bring out greatness in other people that I used to hinder my own. Right. So for once yeah. I've just stepped into my greatness and acknowledged that, you know, I am a coach and I can't avoid it anymore uh, because people see that in me and it's like I was running from it. So I don't run from it. So now I'm coaching. That's and... good. Good. <laughs> good. Congratulations, so, by the way. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. So you can catch it. And I actually started my show again after a year. So I recorded my show, Chai Together, uh, with a friend of mine uh, who's a suicide prevention specialist. So um, what came of Chai Together was really my solo journey led to me interviewing other people. And that led to a lot of videos and even some celebrities coming on. Nice. So that was really cool. And it was cool. Um, I did a suicide prevention project in India as well. Uh, with somebody. So the things that I was able to do because because of my, my will, I feel like my willpower um, that I was restless until I win. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Cool, cool, cool. Wait, well, you know wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. One so, last thing. So, I didn't tell you this. This might be mind boggling uh, for those who are still listening and even you, but when I say my dreams came true from those times when I was depressed and suicidal and the things that I wanted to do and couldn't do, all those dreams came true. And, you know, I discovered Les Brown through somebody I didn't even know when I stopped into a Panera bread store. And um, that man showed me Les Brown at the time when I was suicidal through a network marketing company when I went to their house for, you know, when they show you the deal and everything. And I was so depressed, like I couldn't get out of bed, but I listened to Les Brown's speech, it's not over until you win every single day. Mm -hmm. And I knew nothing of him, but I knew, you know, we had dream trips with this network marketing company mm -hmm. and stuff they had. I said, I wanna go see that man, but I didn't have any money. I was 21 years old, 20 years old. And he was in Germany. I was like, one day I'm gonna meet him. And I did. Mm -hmm. Eight years later, Look at that. At the age of 28. So that goes to show you, you could be depressed down and about, but what God has for you will always come through even if years later. So today he knows me and that's that. Yeah. Do you also believe too that there are many different times in a person's life, mm -hmm. even in the course of a year or in a season, yeah. where you would get these strong urges or digital downloads? Mm -hmm. And you know that it's God speaking to you. And you know that there's going to be opportunities that he shows you through visions, through through dreams. Like, I, yeah, I know for me, definitely through, through dreams yeah. for a fact. And dreams. it's really, it's at that point for you to, to really say, you know what? This is for me, mm -hmm. right? And making that decision. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? with that or 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 is that like far-fetched and kind of woo woo no i actually i'm i know a dream researcher ryan heard you guys can look him up um and i can send you a link to the video that i was on a call with him and he's a dream researcher and he actually shared how dreams are just different realities and i mean chai together came to me in a dream you understand and i actually the logo of it i thought of years ago and i talked about it with a friend like it was just like a joke I had no idea that I somehow painted it because it was in my subconscious. Conscious, yeah. Everything is, everything comes together in life, you know? And no, I don't think it's woo woo. I just think, so like, for example, what are miracles? Like, can people actually answer that? Because I learned that miracles aren't something you comprehend. That's why it's called a miracle because your human brain can't understand, like, how did that happen? You consider it a miracle. So it's really getting down to the education of, why something is and not everything has the answers. And just because someone could be more knowledgeable than you or read more than you or have has been more world traveled, doesn't make somebody necessarily smarter than you. You know, so all these things, I just still treat myself as if I know nothing, you know, like even though I'm told I'm intelligent, all these great things, 
I still remain very balanced into learning mm. more every day because I've already been to the bottom. It, it can never get worse than that. So I don't fear anything anymore, really. <laughs> right on. Right on. So I right hope that on. answers some bit of it. <laughs> it actually did. It actually did. And I, I definitely do appreciate that. So if there's nothing else, guys, I'm not seeing any uh, questions as far as I'm listening to the audience. So I guess we're going to go ahead and wrap this up mm -hmm. here. This has been an amazing <laughs> um, episode, and I truly, truly appreciate it. And by, by the way, Prativa, mm -hmm. I hope I'm saying your name yeah, correctly. Yeah, you are. Not, please forgive me. Okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. Cool. If there's anyone that you feel that's in your circle, in your space, mm -hmm. that you feel, you know what, that would be a fantastic guest, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm still going to be doing this series all month long. By all means, send them over on my way. And I would love as far as to have them be a guest on, on this show because, again, it's not, it's not about me. It's not about you. But it's really about giving the value and helping someone out there. I have, I have a saying in which you're going to hear me um, at the end of this, is that if I can help one person, if we can help one person, then we all have done our jobs. And I awesome. truly believe that, just one person. <laughs> now, if we can't help anybody using our platforms, using our brands, our businesses, our, our power voice, as Les Brown mm -hmm. would, would, would say, <laughs> then what are we doing? What are we doing right so so is this something is this something for everybody to consider we have reached a conclusion here of episode 139 with transformation greatness along with the small business network podcast i want to thank my amazing guests here um prativia on uh, day it, this has been very i would say um informative educational and also inspirational if you haven't had an opportunity when you get a chance please watch the replay it was a lot of insights a lot of great stuff in which that she mentioned so i thank you so so much thank you for having me do you have any final words for the listening audience do, anything that you want to leave with i okay. do my final words would be um i always say this and that's don't kill yourself because of someone else's faults yeah that's something when it comes to suicide that you know don't cut your life short because of what someone else did to you that you deserve more than that to live out the fruition of your life mm. yeah. that's powerful right there thank you that, that <laughs> is powerful and that's something too like man i mean so many ways i can use content with that but that'd be another yeah. time but <laughs> until then fam Family, if what we stated on here even motivated, transformed, or inspired at least one person, at least one person, then may God be the glory and we take no credit for absolutely none of it. Until then, you're all amazing. We thank you so much for, for your time on this Wednesday evening. And by his grace and mercy, look forward to seeing you to the next episode, which will be Mayana. So stay tuned, family. <laughs> thank you for your time. Thanks. Have a good night.